So the WA arrived about a week ago, I guess, and I already have one video on this channel of, uh, of one of the descents that I did. You know, we hit about 55 clicks and whatnot, and then just maintained it over that, you know, um, uh, which is a, a place called Sangster Bridge Road here in uh, here in Falmouth, in Nova Scotia. Um, the machine's actually pretty fast. You know, at that time when I filmed that, it, it wasn't dialed in exactly right so the pedals were still too long the seat was still a little bit too high it wasn't all that comfortable now i've gotten her dialed in pretty good and uh so i took it out today i was getting speeds the average speeds for instance were close to what i would get in the summer with my home built um you know and, and in the summertime i have uh schwalbe one tires 28 millimeter tires on it so they're relatively fast tire and uh, I can average 24, 25 kilometers an hour over my 20K, which is what I use for benchmarking for, for, for that. And uh, the WA has uh, Marathon Racers, which is not a fast tire, and I'm still getting 24, 25 kilometers an hour speed average, for instance, and topping out at speeds that are much higher than uh, the one I was getting in the home built, the, uh, the Aero Bullet. The Aero Bullet's quite a bit wider. Um, it's about uh, three inches, 10 centimeters or so wider, well, almost four inches actually. It's close to 10 centimeters wider and it's higher by about six centimeters as well. So it's got a larger frontal area. So even though it's, it's fairly efficient, it's still faster than a bike. And the other thing about it is of course it's very heavy. So uh, anyway, we'll show you that when we go out for the video. So let's go have a look at the bikes. So here is the WA. You can see it's a uh, nice blue at least i think so and uh, i've got the long nose fitted and the dual headlights and whatnot and uh, i have a cap on it now um, most of my stuff is uh oh, forget to shut that off and uh, most of my stuff is fitted so i've got it fairly comfortable now and uh, got the right length um, i have my toolkit in there um, the seat is now at the right height so once I actually finally do get in the hole, for instance, it's actually quite comfortable inside of it. I don't know that you can see, it's got a pinion uh, C112, so it's got a 12-speed 12, uh, 12 transmission as well as the 10-speed rear cassette. So I get about uh, 16 gear inches to around 237, so it's, uh, it's fairly quick. Um, I left the, uh, the tires that came with it which are basically the marathon racers. They're not a real particularly fast tire, but at least this time of year, because as you can see, there's still snow up there. Um, this time of year, it's pretty good. And uh, um, we have uh, some number of potholes and things like that. So I've got some scorchers for the front and uh, I've got some uh, Schwalbe ones for the rear um, once we get to closer to the summer. So while I don't, I'm not going to take off the uh, the front and the rear today. But one of the advantages that the Wah has is that you can actually disassemble the front and the rear so that you have uh, access to everything, right? And the next time I take it apart, I think I'll, uh, I'll I'll film a video, for instance, and so we can show you how it all works. Um, this particular one is carbon fiber. Um, they come in aramid as well, and. Uh, um, I got the carbon fiber because it's stiffer, so there's a better power transfer, but it does have suspension. And of course with the carbon fiber you can also remove the uh, rear suspension and put in the fixed um, uh, a hardtail, um, which is an even better uh, power transfer. So like I said, I topped out at about 54.7 kilometers per hour on flat ground with this thing. So she is good and stiff. The Aramid version is less stiff, it's a little bit heavier, but it's uh it's less susceptible to damage because it's not as brittle um so i have to be a lot more careful with this one than than i would with uh if it was aramid anyway so that's my wall and i'm expecting in another two weeks that i'll have the bulk from uh, velomobile world and uh, so i'm looking forward to that and so i'll have the two to compare this one will probably end up being my touring machine and also the one that i uh that i use for you know bombing around here as well because um, I am doing car replacement this is the one I built over here and this is going to get electrified um, so right now it's sitting uh, sitting in sort of in storage but it's going to be electrified and uh, I have all the uh, the uh, electrical parts over here for it so it's got a full lighting system and all that and as you can see my workbench kind of cluttered right now because it's got all the stuff 
for the electrification, right? And I bought two batteries and everything else. So it should be able to get about 110K range. Um, I am gonna cheat the speed restrictor on the thing, um, which with TSDZ, it's not too terribly difficult. And essentially, um, I have to change the brakes. I had upgraded this to uh, Shimano um, hydraulic brakes, but the levers unfortunately won't work to cut out on the uh, motor, so that's not particularly safe if you're going to electrify it. So I'm going to go back to the uh, BB7 manual brakes so that I can use the cutout switches um, that are fitted on the brakes that come with the, uh, with the motor, um, you know, so that it's a lot safer for cutting out the motor. Anyway. Um, so that's the intention. So this is going to be my utility vehicle. I'm going to put a trailer hitch on it as well. I have a fairly large trailer. It has 160 liter capacity. And uh, yeah, so that's how we're going to replace cars.